Hello, welcome to Golden Droplets episode number 51, a series of webinars intended to narrow the gap existing between the industry and the academy. In today's episode, we are starting a new mini series. I'm going to be doing interviews with a series of very good geologists that specialize in different fields, so you will get a better understanding of the possibilities of this science. So, once again, Golden Droplets, episode number 51. Enjoy. Okay. Hello, I'm here at Walt Griffith Camacuat with my good friend, Ricardo Franco, who is a specialist in non-metallic ores, with everybody is looking for gold and metals, etc. but almost nobody. For example, I have like 37 years of international experience and I cannot make a 43101 on life songs because I don't have any experience at all. So tell us a little bit about you, how you got here to work in Wagrifa Kamakua, and especially how okay. you got here to work in you know, metallics. Well, actually, as you know, I was born in Colombia. I finished my geological studies in the National University. Then I spent some years working with oil corporations in Colombia I got then a scholarship in Japan. I went and finished a master in oh, geology. Hi, and master. <laughs> in geology, yes, at Kyoto University. After that, I came back to Colombia and I involved myself into the exploration of limestone and silica resources for the cement com companies in South America. I had my own company for three years and I we were doing very interesting job for in many uh, countries of South America. I got in touch then through that uh, experience with Holcim or Holder Bank Cement, a Swiss company. It was, it was created in the city of Holder Bank. Now it is called Holcim. Now they, they are owners of more than uh, maybe 40% of the business in the cement company of this planet. So actually with them, I started learning all about the sedimentary environments for the production of, I mean, to the to detect the, the, the sources for carbonate. And why, why is it so important to find them? I mean, yeah, it is. Imagine a world without carbonate. <laughs> I mean, you, we, we have all these, the big cities, the structure, the, the bones of the city are made of cement and concrete, all the roads. And of course, the electrical wiring is like the, the, like the nervous system of, of the city, but without bones, any electrical system is useless. You need the bones, and the bones of a world, of a society, are the constructions where you do life, where you do business, where you, do, where you, where you make families, where you do sports, everything that, where you have concerts and music. I mean, you need a place. And for that place, you need cement and silica. And, and, and silica is so important because it is, is the source of all windows and glass. I you mean, know, I always wonder, why don't we get the sand from the beach? There is so much sand in the beach, but no, apparently that sand is not good enough. The, good, the, the interesting thing about sand, I mean, for sand is a sedimentological term. It, it, it deals only with size, but not with composition. So we have so many different sources of sand. We have sources of sand as different as rocks. So we could have uh, uh, sands that are uh, the weathering, are the result of weathering processes from pegmatites or from basalts. And all, the salts, the, all these sands are going to be very different in chemical composition and of course in, in structure. For example, I have worked in sands that are titaniferous sands in uh, and it is part also of the cement process. Some of the t titanium and iron, it is combined from all these, in all the beaches in Ecuador, for example. They are, ve they are very dark. They are dark beaches. They, it is not like in Colombia where you see almost, they are white because they are mostly silica or, or microorganisms. So, and, and the silica you need for making this type of glass usually is, is yeah, it's quartz. It's quartz is the, is the silica that is melted away. So depending on the source of, of the sand, the applications are infinite in the whole process of the industry. And, 
Ricardo, you told me that you work in Dubai. In the, I will in, in, in Saudi in, Saudi in South Africa. Yeah, in, in Saudi Arabia first. Yeah, I was in a contract with WGN here in in Canada. We were involved in the exploration of resources of limestone for a cement company, and it was a very beautiful project on the Precambrian of uh, of the of the shield, the Arabian shield where we have uh, metamorphosed uh, limestones. They are marbles now nowadays. These marbles are, are part of the shield. And uh, the problem with these marbles was that it, it was a, a, a little bit too high in silica. But anyway, uh, nothing is perfect. You just need to, make, to mix this kind of siliceous limestone or marble with the right amount of very good marble. And then the mix is perfect and you can make the most wonderful cement. So that, that was... So a, you can make cement from marble? Yes, absolutely. I didn't know that. <laughs> because marble, practically marbles are calcium carbonate too, and they have just, the, the, the molecule is, is bigger. Sometimes the marbles have a problem because they, 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 couldn't, they may have even three, four, five percent of magnesium, and the magnesium is a poison for the cement industry. I think these videos are brilliant and I'm sure you will like them too. Please like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell.